With over 37 models that can be used around the world, our family of EMP protection devices installs easily in minutes. Also serving as one of the world's fastest whole home surge protection devices working in less than one nanosecond, the EMP shield will protect against electromagnetic pulses, coronal mass ejections, lightning, and all forms of power surges. Proven to withstand more than 40 EMP strikes with zero degradation, the EMP shield is also one of the world's strongest surge protectors capable of withstanding over 100,000 amps. Good morning, this is Yana Benoun with Israeli News Live and today we are in Burlington, Kansas. We are in EMP Shield Factory and uh, I am going to introduce you to Matthew D. Vader who is a representative for EMP Shield and who have organized this particular tour for us. Welcome to Kansas. I trust you had a safe trip here and the proverbial Kansas winds didn't blow you off the road. Yes, we hope that no tornadoes will happen while we are here. I, I think you're going to be okay here today. We just got a little bit of winds, but clear skies. Very good. So, Matthew, uh, this is an exciting day for us today because we have been uh, introducing people to EMP Shield, and there is some important questions that came up about this product. So we decided with Steve that we're going to come ourselves to look at the factory, to meet important people over here, and you agreed to uh, organize this for us and introduce us to the people. But please tell us, why is it so important that we are paying attention to EMP Shield today? Well, certainly, yes. Well, there's so much going on in the world. Uh, there's a lot of threats, both natural and man-made. Um, you know, everything from threats of war to threats from uh, solar flares to, you know, just your everyday lightning protection for your home. Um, I think your visit today will also answer a lot of questions that your viewers might have, um, being able to see that this is an American-made product made by real people here in Kansas, USA. And they'll get to put faces with this and the structure of our facility with this, help them understand a lot of things. And then we'll have some people here that can answer some questions as well in the science. Yeah, I think what's really important is to recognize that this is a United States product made right here in absolutely. Kansas, that it's not some Chinese product. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. So we are supporting United States economy. Absolutely. And, and you know, Protecting. having the this, this self-reliance too that these products are made here and we're not going to get cut off by, you know, some foreign entity of, you know, some situation or disagreement. Right. I think this is extremely important to know. So are you ready to introduce us to some important people? Here? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we'll get our safety glasses on here and get ready to, you know, sort of follow me and we'll see type of thing here like we're at the factory. Okay. And I'll introduce you to the president of the company, Pete Keegan. And Excellent. he can begin the tour. Excellent. Does that sound great? That sounds great. Thank you. Pete, I've got my friends here from uh, Israeli News Live, and they're here to do the interview and tour of the factory today, and I was hoping that maybe you could give them the, the full nickel tour. Happy to do it. Nice to meet you. I'm Pete Keegan. I'm the president of EMP Shield. Oh, nice to meet you, Pete. Can Come you on, we'll give you a tour. Okay, very good. Companies that have supported the use of EMP Shields in their facilities and projects. Our operations actually start in our first building. That's where we have a clean room that we make the circuit boards that go into the EMP shields. So we have various models and they come over here in kits. So the first ma manufacturing of the circuit boards get made up into these kits. And you see these boxes here. Each of those boxes contain 24, com the components to make 24 EMP shields of whatever kind we make. When any of these assembly folks get finished with the product they're making, then they come and pick up the next traveler and make the next 24. So what they do over there is assemble and wire the circuit boards, put them in the housings, prepare them for testing before they get potted. Now they get potted to, to allow outdoor service. These are IP66 and IP67 rated, which means they can the IP66 gives a rating that it can be installed outside in a driving rain and it does well. The IP67 allows actually immersion in water and continued operation. So the assembly gets done, we test it one time before potting to protect us and we can repair things. Once it's potted, it's tested again to protect the customer 
to make sure that every product that's sent out of here was operationally tested before it was packaged for shipping and delivery. So what we have here is a number of products that have been manufactured and potted and tested. Now they're going over to shipping and receiving where they'll be cleaned, labeled, tested one final time, and then put into the shipping boxes to be delivered to the customer. So we maintain an inventory of all the kinds of EMP shields that we make so that our customers can order them and deliver them off the shelf. So our manufacturing gets done, our shipping and receiving gets done here. We grew out of our first building in less than a year. We came into this building in 2021. We're about to outgrow this building. So our manufacturing is continuing to grow as our customer base grows. We have thousands of affiliates on record. So our sales staff numbers over 2,000. Wow, wow. With 60 inside. Uh, we, we're in what you guys call the storm shelter, and I'm really curious, I, just out of curiosity, why is this called the storm shelter when it looks like a break room? <laughs> well, this is the storm shelter because we need to protect all of our employees and any guests that would happen to be here. So when we bought this building, we took it back to the walls and just remade it. So it's nice that this is our kitchen, but this is a concrete poured walls, the concrete poured ceiling, the FEMA rated three point tie down doors. So should there be a storm, our employees will be protected during that. You know what I find fascinating about that though is that the EMP show product to begin with is to protect homes, protect businesses, protect automobiles. And when you've got a company that cares enough about the employees and visitors that are visiting here that you're mindful of even things like that, it shows that you definitely have to be mindful about the product as well that you've manufactured here. Is when people go on and they'll see, like for example, an EMP shield for their ham radio, uh, then there's one, say, for the home, and then there's one for um, of course, we have the other different devices like the automobile, etc. But especially when you're dealing with, let's say you have the EMP shield and it's on your on your home, um, what would be the reason for the different devices, say for the ham radio as well? Is there maybe something a little different about that device versus the home device? Yes. Well, your home device, we have two models: the W and the RL, the single phase 12240. And the big difference is. Modern homes, most of your electrical panels are mounted flush with the drywall. In the older homes or more of the farm areas, your electrical panel is either mounted on a pole or on a concrete block wall. So the W goes right through a knockout in the side of the electrical panel, whereas the remote LED or the RL version gets installed inside the electrical box and just a thin wire with the remote LEDs comes out to give you indication of operability. I got it. So, so therefore, uh, because you know, I guess some people would think, well, you know, I bought one for the house. You would think that it's going to cover my, it'll protect the ham radio as well. But if you're getting the one separately for your ham radio, for example, is th that's the purpose for doing something like that, correct? Correct. What, what you're really looking for is you're trying to protect every source of energy that comes into the house or whatever you're trying to protect. Right. Whereas your ham radio is likely to get hit on the antenna with a uh, lightning. So that, that the power coming down the or sending out on an antenna, that's where you, your interface is. So between the antenna and the house or your power side, you want to protect that. And because it's an antenna, it's going to have a specific need depending upon how many watts your radio puts out, what its uh, uh, mating configuration is for the connectors. So that segues yes. into the various DC models. So our 12 volt to protect a car is pretty standard. But when you get into solar protection, the solar panels go from a simple one panel to a very complex set of panels and the maximum photovoltaic voltage for each system is designed by the engineers that designed that system. Some of those are 24 volt, 48 volt systems, but the maximum input voltage from the 
photovoltaic voltage is what you need to protect for. And those right. are hundreds of volts maximum that we've protected is a thousand volts. You know, and it's not, you know, the whole thing is, is this is not to sell, oh, let's sell you a whole bunch of things that you really don't need. That there are specific purposes for that, and that's that's what that's what the people that are listening need to know is that there's specific reasons why you need one for your home, one for your uh, solar panels, one for your ham radio if you have, especially for the preppers because there's a lot of preppers out there, and they may they may have had that in their mind that all they need is the one for the home, and that takes care of everything. Yes. Hello, I am with Dr. Flamen Doino, Chief Technology Officer here at EMP Shield. Hello, Dr. Doino. Hello, Yana. How do you do? I'm very pleased that you are visiting us. Thank you for your interest and uh, hopefully we'll be able to disseminate some more knowledge about the importance of uh, the hazard that uh, high altitude electromagnetic pulse present and what are the measures that we can take in order to make our electrical grid more resilient and the potential measures to mitigate the, the hazardous impacts. Yes, Dr. Doinov, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What is your position here at the company? What's your history here? Um, I met uh, some of the key uh, personnel when they approached us at uh, the uh, Missouri uh, Institute for Defense and Energy. We are working on counter UAV technology, counter measures. And uh, we, uh, our intention was to help them further the technology because, as you know, as the threats evolve, so is the measures we have to uh, make better and more capable uh, mitigation technologies. So I came to United States, my adopted country, uh, a month after the Berlin Wall fell down. I was born in Bulgaria, and here I had a really, really exciting. Um, career, uh, professional life, as well as personal, and now I am uh, really pleased, it's an honor and also a huge responsibility to be part of the mission to make our critical infrastructure uh, more protected, more resilient to the potential effects of natural and also man-made hazardous events such as high altitude electromagnetic pulse. But let's not be mistaken, uh, there are other means of uh, inducing an effect on anything electrical or electronic such as intentional electromagnetic interference, jammers for example, it's a common way of putting it, but there are some even better, more powerful directed energy weapons that can uh, impose such an effect. Do you think that our government is ready for such an event? Do you think that government deals with it? Um, using the term government in uh, this case, I don't think it's the best way to phrase the question because, uh, yes, uh, our uh, government and many uh, agencies and institutes that are um, basically working on behalf of the government and on behalf of our nation uh, are aware there are multiple for many years commissions. We know the executive order based on which already two pilot uh, uh, places, uh, pilot programs are in order. One of them is John Bay San Antonio and we are an active member of them. Also the Department of Homeland Security as well as the uh, FERC, NERC, FEMA. Many people are and organizations are aware and we take active measures. Um, but uh, the, as with everything else with such scale and such major undertaking uh, it takes time in order to be implemented, uh, in order to provide a robustness, resilience in general to the potential effect. Uh, we are aware from anywhere from the Kennington effect to the most recent events from solar activities uh, which can cause uh, geomagnetic disturbance on the natural side of events and also the potential threat from adversaries such as you know, the, the suspected uh, players. Um, so, we are doing our share, 
for this Mission America of making the electrical grid critical infrastructure in general because many things from electronics and electrical to computers and communications everything is based on electrical power and uh, the all 16 sectors of the critical infrastructure are interrelated and everything goes back to the electricity. You know, we are touring this facility today and we are very impressed because this EMP shield product uh, that you're offering is an excellent surge protector. There is no better, as I could see here. But can you tell us about the EMP aspect of it a little bit more? Uh, when a nuclear pump is uh, detonated above 25, 30 miles altitude, then the everything, all the phenomena that uh, are initiated with uh, uh, gamma rays uh, producing Compton electrons, which uh, rotating or moving into the magnetic fields of the Earth, um, they generate this massive electromagnetic wave, which basically is the radiated wave, which induces currents of voltage into the long uh, distribution and transmission electrical lines and after that uh, the main problem is the E1 or the first phase of the pulse which is uh, according to the standards and from what we know from the test in late 50s and theoretical studies are about 2.3 nanoseconds rest time with an intensity at the ground level uh, somewhere 50 kilovolts per meter of intensity and after that the duration of U1 is about 23 25 nanoseconds but this is followed by pulse that is very similar to duration characteristic like the lightning strike which is E2 and uh, after that uh, we have a relatively long extremely low frequency Mm, phase three of the pulse, which is uh, very similar to based on the geomagnetic disturbance that uh, uh, final uh, evolution of the high altitude electromagnetic pulse uh, forms. And uh, they all have similarity, but also differences. And these uh, similarities are there all intense, they're massive. However, the frequency content is different. The energy that they uh, introduce into electrical or in anything that can couple this energy is different. Uh, so they have to be treated, approached and treated differently. And we are developing devices based on technologies that are trying to address all specificity of those. My name is Patrick Porter. I'm the clean room and production supervisor here at EMP Show. We've got a SMT machine line and a blue hole machine line that's back there. Uh, so starting with our SMT machine line, we've got a B stacker. This takes our blank PCBs, our platters, and loads them into our screen printer. And this printer is a machine that takes stencils, see the stencil has solder paste on it. The PCB that's loaded from the D-stacker comes into this printer, gets lined up with cameras to the stencil, and uses squeegees to layer solder paste on the pads of the PCBs where we're going to be placing s &P components. Once the PCBs have ran through our printer, we go to this work table. This is an opportunity for us to inspect the PCBs One and, second. Make, and make sure that we have a good print. If there's any components that need to be hand placed or worked on here, uh, this is a good opportunity to do it. This is our pick and place machine. It's a 12 nozzle turret head uh, SMT machine that places uh, from from our uh, sorry from our feeder trolleys. Each feeder trolley can hold up to 33 different reels. We've got eight trolleys. So, as you can see, we can place quite a few components with this machine. Uh, 
and we can place them quite quickly. I, I believe right now we're placing about so 7,817 components an hour. When this thing's running at full speed, we can run about 12,000 components an hour. So we can we can really boogie in here. You probably won't be able to pick it up with the camera, but I've got about 20 of them. Oh yeah, I can see the little flecks of metal. Yep. How, about, what size are those? How small is that? So these are 01005. Is um, that like one ten thousandths of an inch? I believe or? that's, um, yes. One, wow. One ten thousandths. You can see them really good from the angle there. I'm going to shine the light on them. Is the camera picking but them these, up? We'll know when we get it there. It's hard these to are, tell. These are 10K resistors. That's amazing how fast this machine grabs those pieces and puts them on there, Stephen. You're not kidding. That is amazing, Matthew. And you know, I've always wondered myself, when you're looking at circuit boards, how does a circuit board get made? You know? Right. And you know most things are automated today anyways, but uh, to actually get to see the process of how this is done, is really a, a, a feat of science and technology together. All right, friends, thank you very much again for joining us here at EMP Shield, Shield headquarters uh, all the way out here in Kansas. And I'm with Peter Ke uh, Keegan, right? Yes, sir. The president of the company. And, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about the history of EMP Shield and Mr. Keegan, if you'd be so gracious to share that with our listeners, uh, where how EMP Shield got started here. I'd be happy to. Um, I moved here to Burlington to fix the nuclear power plant, and I met the founder, Tim Cardy, doing another little project out at the power plant. He and I got acquainted in 2017. He kind of proved the principle for the EMP Shield and made some for his own use. And by 20, early 2018, we had put a patent application together. So by the end of 2018, fourth quarter 2018, we put a business plan together and went out and started raising the first funds. And by April of 2019, we'd raised the first $2 million to get our facilities started. So we started operations in January of 2019. That was the first year of full operations. And uh, we started with a smaller number of products, but as customers had additional solar panels to be protected and variances in the solar panel and generator collection. Um, we ended up with over 50 different models to support all the different needs of our customers. So so with that amazing history, I mean, Mr. Keegan, you guys have come a long way in a very short amount of time. and. I don't know exactly when we became supporters of EMP Shield and promoting the product on our own uh, channel, but there, there are a lot of ministries, news organizations, which were a combination of both, that do support different products and things like that. But for us, we never, I never believed in anything else until EMP Shield came along. And quite frankly, that was the only reason why we even stepped up to want to support it. Uh, you know, besides the fact it gives our, our listeners a way to support our, our work, it was because we really genuinely believe in this product. And so can you tell us uh, where is EMP Shield at today? I can, yes. Um, so today, as I told you, we, we made our first patent application in 2018. We now have nine issued patents with over 200 individual claims approved over those nine patents. So we've not only looked at home protection, solar protection, but we all also have a lot of uh, the approved uh, patents to protect the grid, the grid components, uh, our military, uh, our critical infrastructure. So right now we're developing products to take care of our critical infrastructure and government facilities. And, and with that being stated as well, I know that a lot of things in the military, we have parts, chips, things like that that are developed overseas, which, which compromises the military in that aspect. But as we have toured the facility, it, it appears to be that practically everything is made, I mean, of course, naturally, I'm sure not everything, but for the most part, 
everything's made here in the United States to where even if we lost partnerships with other countries, would it be fair to say that EMP Shield will still be able to manufacture regardless? It would. Right now we source everything through the United States. But one of the things we want to talk about in the future is we are putting in a proposal in response to Commerce Department's Chips for America Act. So we are developing a proposal now to submit to Commerce to put a gallium nitride fab foundry here in Coffee County. Along with that we have six business partner, partners bringing more of the microelectronics back to the United States. So we should hear something about that toward the end of this year. Are they coming from Taiwan by chance? Any of the companies there or, or, or maybe can't say as of yet? No, they're all American companies. That's okay. part, part of the Chips for America Act is all of the funding, all of the people, all of the processes mm -hmm have to be American citizens, and you got to go through a whole foci analysis to show that you have no foreign ownership or control issues. That is absolutely amazing because as you know and as I know, there is a, a great concern of so much that has been developed. China's involved, you know, whatever other country might be involved, it does compromise us. and and all the jobs that we've lost over the years from the 80s and the 90s going uh, to the Far East and and you guys are definitely leading the way and showing that things can be American made and putting out an amazing product especially when we saw the first part of the assembly over there and the machine the equipment the things that you guys have purchased to make sure that when people order an EMP shield you're really getting not just American made but restoring back the integrity of American Made to where people know it is a true quality product. Yes, um, we are. We want to thank you guys for that. Thank you for the time that you've taken here to share with us, share with our listeners here as well about the company. I'm glad You're very welcome. Thank you. And uh, uh, as a team with uh, our colleagues nationwide, uh, we are trying our best to provide the nation with, uh, with a better sleep. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Doinov. Uh, it was a pleasure, real pleasure to meet you. Thank you.